Oh, how the time flies. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson. And can you believe that it has been one year since Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions hit your airwaves? We have interviewed authors, entrepreneurs, playwrights, musicians, and everyone in between, all to bring you the best of literary conversation. And we plan to do it again this year, but only better. So join us right here in the Literary Lounge each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. See you there. think I was just gonna leave y'all forever. I know y'all were probably talking to me like, where is this girl? She just acting up. I know her daughter then went to college, but now here she is. She's not showing up for her shows, but there were some things going on. So two weeks ago, we had Mrs. Louisiana Universal who um, subbed for me and Clarissa Lang, she did a beautiful job. I watched the show and I was just so happy to see how she just got comfortable and she just started throwing those questions at the guests and the guests were throwing those answers right back. It was beautiful. So we really enjoyed that. And I want to thank you, Clarissa, for standing in the gap for me. I really appreciate that. And then last week, we weren't able to get the show. Um, we had some trouble with some guests and I had just gotten back to town, so I wasn't able to get it all together. So I said, oh, you know what? It's all good. We're just going to take a little break. But now we're back. And we have two fabulous, I'm talking fabulous guests. Um, we're going to be talking with Miss Deborah Rose. She is a police officer in Philadelphia, and she's written two books that we're going to hear a lot more about. And then we also have Mr. Arthur Gilbert, who is an up and coming motivational speaker right here in New Orleans. So um, we're going to get to know him, find out what his platform is all about and what his message is to our young men. And I'll tell you right now, we need prayer in our city. I mean, we had um, today, if you're Facebook friends with me, you probably saw the um, post that I shared to my page of um, the lady who was actually carjacked in broad daylight. She was just taking groceries to her house. And then when she came back, a man was sitting in her car with her baby and told her to take her baby out the car so he could take the car. And he held her at gunpoint until she took the baby out of the car so he could take the car. It's sad. It really is. And then there are so many other um, things like that going on. We had a mass shooting a few weeks ago um, in right here in New Orleans. Um, there, there, is, there was today they pulled a, a car out of, um, out of the water and there was a body in it. I mean, there's so much going on, and right now people need help. People are hurting. So I'm just asking you to pray for our city. Now, I'm going to get off of that before I start crying because I absolutely do love our city, and I do love our young men, our up-and-coming young men. And so I'm not. I'm going to get off of that for a minute, but I do want to share some good news. Um, I got this book in the mail a couple of days ago. Well, not a couple of days ago. I got it yesterday, this book. And um, this book is now my sixth full-length book. I mean, I've written about, um, shoot, maybe about 12 anthologies, but I've written five full-length novels. This is my first nonfiction, and this is the one I'm most proud of because this right here is the published version, hard, hardback copy, of my dissertation. Yes, I did not go to my graduation. Um, just too much going on. I had to get my daughter to Clark Atlanta. For me, that was most important. I already had my degree. I just wanted to participate in the actual ceremony. But I decided not to participate in the ceremony because I wanted to get my daughter ready for college and um, use those funds toward that momentous occasion. And so yesterday I got this in the mail and it made me feel so good. 
And I really pray that um, there are some African-American women who are going to be blessed by this. Um, the name of my dissertation was Perceived Anger, Exploring the Angry Black Woman Syndrome and Its Effect on African-American Female Corporate Leaders. Often, African-American women are just accused of being angry, of having attitudes, of being hard to work with. If we disagree, we're automatically labeled as um, hard to work with, um, difficult, angry. Um, the B word. And many times what women do is, and I went through it myself because I did not want to be called those things. Many times I was sanitized how I responded to certain things because I did not want to be called an angry black woman. But what it did was make me indecisive and it made me ineffective as a leader. And um, in my studies, I found that um, there were a lot of women who went through that where they, some people did kind of second guess how they were going to respond to something because they didn't want to be called angry. And some people, they say, you know what, forget what they're saying. I'm going to go ahead and tell the truth. And so it affected leaders in so many different ways. And that's the reason why I did this study. And so I'm very, very proud of this study. If you want to know more about this study, if you would like me to speak on it with your organization, contact me. Um, you can reach me at Rhonda L., that's R-H-O-N-D-A-L, as in Lawson, at MTW, that's Meet the World, MTWImageSolutions.com. And we'll put that into the um, comments so you'll be able to get that. Um, so if you want to get more information on this study, I'm really proud of this. Um, and I'm really proud of it mostly because it took me five years to do it. I was a single parent, full-time Army and um, I'm actually moved to Belgium while working on this. And I'm retired from the army and moved back home to New Orleans while still working on this. So there was a lot going on. But I thank God that he got me through it. I thank God for the friends who kept me encouraged. I thank God for my family who supported me. And so I want to thank all of them for making this book possible. Now, without further ado, I would love to bring on our first guest, Miss Deborah Rose. Deborah, are you there, lady? Are you, where'd she go? Did Deborah disappear on us? Oh, there she is. <laughs> okay, hi, Deborah. Can you hear us? Why is it every time the show starts, all of a sudden we can't hear anymore? Okay, um, so while, while we're getting that fixed, um, while we're getting that fixed, I'll just go ahead and tell you a little bit about Deborah. As I mentioned, she is a Philadelphia police officer, and she has a strong story. This lady has been through so much, and um, I want her to tell you this story. Um, her first book was actually about, it's called The Shadow in My Eyes, and it was actually about her experience being sexually assaulted by a Philadelphia police officer. And she actually became a Philadelphia police officer. And I thought that was totally amazing. I actually wrote her first press release when she released her book. And that was, that was the first question that popped in my mind is what made you decide to become a Philadelphia police officer? So are you there now, Deborah? Okay, so we're still having trouble with the sound. Um, hopefully, hopefully she's not on mute. So um, we'll go ahead and let, get that fixed. And now, so now Deborah is um, a motivational speaker. She's a life coach, and she's actually written her second book, which is called Praise God. Um, I don't look like what I've been through, which I think is totally powerful. And um, it's all, it's just all about what she's been through. And we were talking about this before the show started, which I'm, well, I'm so frustrated that we can't hear now because I wanted to tell her own story. But, um, I was very, I was very struck by, she's always smiling, she's always positive, and she's been through so much. And I said, well, this is what happens when we tell our story, our trials become our triumph. And then we're able to empower somebody else by telling our story, by at the same time building ourselves up. And so then when we do that, um, we're able to smile, we're able to walk a little taller. Okay, so I've got a note that we're good now. Deborah, can you hear me? <coughs> Yes, I can. yes, there she is. I can hear you. Did you hear everything I was saying about you? Yes, I was listening, but I could not. 
I don't know why you couldn't hear me. But that's okay. We can hear you now. I want you to tell your story. <laughs> Hello. I was just like, that God is good. Um, I, um, I'm a Philadelphia police officer now. Uh, I'm very happy in my life. However, childhood sexual abuse was running my life for a very, very long time. And I was sexually molested and abused and raped and almost killed several times by a Philadelphia police officer. It started at the age of, of 12 years old, but however, he was close with my family. He was molding me on who he wanted me to be, how he wanted me to act. And I was a robot. I didn't know myself. So by the time 12 years old came from nine years old, um, he already knew that I was uh, intimidated, looked at him as a role model. Mm. Um, he was a police officer, very highly decorated at the time. Um, I just wanted to, to help people like I thought he was helping people. Mm. But that all changed at the age of 12 when he started to sexually molest me and rape me um, beyond uh, what anyone can even imagine. And this would happen on a daily basis. Oh this would happen two or three times a day, Rhonda. Um, he threw me from a moving vehicle. Mm. He is, um, you know, at, riding at 45 miles per hour. My skull was oh. cracked. You know, the doctor said I should have died. But, however, God said not today. Amen. Yes. <laughs> not my child today. So I'm happy about that. But as time went on, Rhonda, and I was... I wanted to die after a while because of all the abuse and that I couldn't talk about. I was mm. scared that he was going to kill my family. I was scared that he was going to kill me, like he said. Um, he said that he would get away with it because he's a police officer. Mm. He said that um, I didn't have a choice, that he would kill me. So I was playing the victim and the protector at the same time. You know, I wanted to protect my mom and my family. Right, And I think that's something that we take on, yeah, we look back on it and like we, we weren't protecting anybody. We we know that now as adults, but at that age, you do feel like you're protecting. I mean, I, I mean, I had my own experience where I thought I was protecting and I think that I wasn't protecting anything. But at that age, that's the responsibility that you take on yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I took that on when I didn't have to. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents were my parents for a reason. You know, maybe they couldn't see anything. Uh, you know, I was close with my father as I got older. And uh, I didn't have to protect him. He's my father. You know, I know yes. that now. You know, because if I had a child, I would say, hey, I'm here to protect you. You know, they're older than you. They they were my parents. And, and I chose to, to not save me at a younger age. And um, that that's the fact of the matter is I didn't save me. and I And I forgave myself for not saving me at that age. But you know what? I'm free now. Yes. Um, all the times that he pulled his gun to my head, he said he was going to kill me. You know, I believe these things. You know, when he threw me from that moving vehicle at the age of 14, I said, you know, this is very well possible that I will die. Mm. And and I wanted to be like him at first, Rhonda, being a police officer. I wanted to save people. But that mission has changed. I, I, I heard you ask that question. Like, what, what would make me become a police officer after what this police officer did to me um my mission to save others from officers like himself to save the other women that i'm going to encounter being raped out there by someone else uh being held against their will and that is my mission now Rhonda, to give back and that's why i decided to step into my truth and my purpose and write and write the shadow in my eyes that's that's co-authored by sharon monet it's called the shadow in my eyes everyone it's on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles, Books a Million. Now, um, I know Sharon actually co-wrote this book with you. And um, shouts out to my soror, Sharon Monet, Pen Legacy. That's my girl. Right. <laughs> my, first, my first client with uh, Meet the World Image Solutions, actually. Um, but um, talk to me about the process where you had to actually relive all of this. You had to actually kind of face some truths in order to be able to write this book effectively. Absolutely. And you know, the, the funny thing is when I went to go write this book, I was so excited. I wanted it to be heard, but I was in tears before I even made it 
to Shimon. I was on tears when I was talking to her on the phone saying, hey, can you help me? Mm. You know, I was crying. I think she couldn't even understand me halfway. But we did set up a meeting. And when we set up that meeting, I thought I was over everything. I said, hey, I went to court. You know, I've been to counseling. We all know in court, you know, they don't want to ask you certain questions because they want to make their client look like they didn't do anything wrong. Of course, yes. So, all these things that I've, I've lived through. And then when I got to writing this story, Siobhan dug deep. She, she pulled everything out of me that I, I didn't even know that was still deep down in there. Mm -hmm. So I used a box of tissues every time I met with Sharon. Every time I met with her, I was using all her tissues. I don't even <laughs> think she has anymore <laughs> because I used them all. And I'm, I'm very grateful for her. But it was a very it was a process that I was started to run away from. I started to say, hey, this is too much. I'm going to do an about face. And I'm going to dodge Sharon. So every time, every chance I got, I started to dodge her calls, mm. dodge her questions. And, you know, until finally she said, hey, if you're going to do this, let's do it. If not, then, you know, you need to, you know, you need to just step aside. And, and you know what I said? I dug deep and I said, no, I got to do this. Not only for me, but for other women that can't speak for themselves. Yes. I have to give a voice to the voiceless. Yes. And I came this far as no way I'm turning around. Exactly. No way. Exactly. And um, so now by telling your story, you've empowered yourself because now the story doesn't have you. You have the story. Absolutely. Your experiences are not keeping you prisoner anymore. Absolutely. And I will never uh, once you see your old road of destruction that you was on, rather I can see the old road of, of who I was. And on my new path, I would never go backwards. Mm. Um, man, that I was being consumed by 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 this devilish, demonic experience that happened in my life. And you know what? It's nowhere near that now. It's not any of that. It's no evil in my heart. I have dug deep to forgive the, this this person that that done this to me, and I really forgive him because I pray for him. Have you so, ever have you ever faced this person again since um since he's gone to jail? I have not. I have not faced him again, but I have written a letter down. Um I wrote a letter to him, you know, that I did not send off. Mm. Um but I have it and I do read it to let me know where I'm at. To and I you know, I wrote a letter to myself, forgiving me and you know, I did that in this book, but I've really got down and dirty forgiving him. Do you think um, you would ever send that letter to him? I can send it to him. I just didn't want any legalities to go to, to be involved with it. Um, so I didn't want any kind of, you know, harassment to 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 come forth or right. anything like that. So I, I guess I will not send it. Um, but I'm still free with having it. So he doesn't have to get it. I am totally free with yes. with looking at it and seeing where I was and to help others yes. become um who they destined to be and not stuck in that inertia of trauma. And that is a perfect segue to your next, your second book. But we're going to, before we get into that second book, we're going to take a really small, quick break. Okay. Um, you know, we got to regroup, but okay. what I want you all to do, cause I see everybody's getting into the chat. Thank you so much for joining us. Post your questions. Ask Deborah Rose, what make, what makes her so powerful? How, and, um, you don't want to miss this because she's going to talk about this second book and what she's been doing since then, since she's written this first book. And it's amazing. So you stay right there. We're going to be right back. So while we're gone, you like, you comment, you share. Let's make this thing go viral. All right. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Sheriff Joe Lapinto, and you are watching the New Orleans Talk Network. Oh, how the time flies. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, 
And can you believe that it has been one year since Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions hit your airwaves? We have interviewed authors, entrepreneurs, playwrights, musicians, and everyone in between, all to bring you the best of literary conversation. And we plan to do it again this year, but only better. So join us right here in the Literary Lounge each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. See you there. Are you looking for a home to live stream your next event? Give us a call here at Bethesda Community Event Center, the only place on a golf course that can host and broadcast live your wedding reception, your baby shower, business seminar, and any other special event. Give us a call at 504 708 9454 for more details. Happy Merry Mondays. It's your girl Mary J. I want you to tune in with me to Real Talk with Mary J on New Orleans Talk Network every Monday morning at 10 a.m. Then follow me to blog talkradio.com slash real talk with Mary J at 10 p.m. It's going to be a merry Monday every Monday at 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. You've just tuned in to New Orleans Talk Network. And we are sitting here having a very powerful conversation with Miss Deborah Rose, who is a Philadelphia police officer um, who wrote a book called Shadow in My Eyes. But that's not the only thing she did. She now has a new book um, that's out. She also started a nonprofit organization. Um, she is a life coach. She is a motivational speaker. It's amazing she's done all this. And she just told you about the trials that she went through um, from the age of nine years old. And now she was able to do all of this. So um, I just want to jump back in. Deborah, how were you, how are you able to do all of this? Okay, I think, okay, I think we're having some issues again, but that's okay. We're going to fix this. Deborah, are you there? You can hear me. I can't hear, I hear you. you. I hear oh, you. <laughs> okay, so yeah, talk to me about your second book. Oh, my second book, Rhonda, is called Praise God. I don't look like what I've been through. And you know what? I am thankful to God that I do not look like what I've been through. Um, either do these survivors. Um, it, it's nine other survivors in this book uh, for Praise God. I don't look like what I've been through. Each of them are in their different stages of, of what happened in their life that changed their life around. Some at a younger age, some at an older age. But you know what, Rhonda? It flipped them upside down and, and, it, and it made them feel like they weren't good enough to be here anymore. And you, mm. you know what? Um, I encourage them and they know now that they are perfect enough. They are imperfectly perfect and to step into their truth and tell who they are and where they came from. I, I call them lady warriors because yes. that is that is who they that's are. Ex that's exactly who they are. Now, how did you find these ladies? I found these ladies through, you know, personal people that I know. I found some online. Most of them, I know who they are. Um, and it, it's a couple, one of them, two of them are family members of mine. Okay. And, you know, I had no idea that they were going through this or my friends that I have. I know, I had no idea of their history. And their history is um, amazing. And when I say amazing, it's not amazing that, that the trauma that they went through, but who they are today yes. uh, stepping out of that. And, you know, we all we all know that it's important to link together and, and hold each other's arms and hands and just make a movement to step together. And so that's what I wanted these ladies to know. You don't have to worry about not be, being good enough, being great enough, because you are perfect in who you are, yes. no matter how slow you're stepping or yes. how fast our you are. Our history does not determine our future. Just because we may have been born in a certain situation, just because certain things may have happened to us, just because somebody may have called us something or doubted us does not mean that that determines where we're going to end up in life. 
Absolutely. And you know what? I, I've let that happen long enough. And I was one person, you know, at my job and another person at home. Uh, you know, I used to be in shambles at home. I was letting it um, block my blessings. I, I wasn't able to get out of my own way yes. until I dealt with my trauma. Yes. So now that that's moved, nothing else can be a trauma to me. Even but if bad times come, bad times don't last forever. And Amen. we know greater times are on the way. Well, I do want to let you know, um, Torin Anthony Michaels, he is um, actually a, a casting agent here in New Orleans. He wants to know where he can purchase your books. He said he needs to purchase your books. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for that support, Torin. You can go on Barnes & Nobles, Amazon, Books A Million, and PenLegacy.com. Those are all the places that you can purchase these two books right now and, and I would love for you to have them. Um, I thank you for your support. I'm ready to step into to everything that God is having me to do, my purpose. Um, my nonprofit is launching as well. Uh, yes, talk to me 15th. about the nonprofit. What's the name of your nonprofit? My nonprofit is Phenomenal Women by Nature. And I know everybody's like, how did you come up with that name? Well, I came up with that name is by nature, God made us to be great. Yes. So you you put them together, you put phenomenal because that's who we are, we're great. And you put by nature together and you know what? We are naturally great and we're naturally going to be there for one another even if they can't see the path that someone wants to help them. So it's going to be like transitional homes for women coming from sexually or sexual abuse and domestic violence. We're going to have a place for them all across the United States. Well, if there's any way that um, I and Meet the World Image Solutions can support that, all you have to do is say the word. Oh, awesome. Well, I'm saying the word. <laughs> right <now. laughs> we'll talk more about that, I'm sure. Now, um, a, a couple more um, comments. Um, Jason Grooms. Yes, that's, that's my brother. Okay, well, he <laughs> says, awesome, Debbie. I'm so proud of you. I told you you would do it. He loves you. I love you too, Jason. Uh, thank you, bro. You did tell me. Thank you for everyone tuning in. Jason, I love you. You've all, you know, you always encourage me. And uh, man, I just can't thank you enough. Thank you for chiming in, bro. I'll, I'll call you later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have two minutes left in the show and um, or in this portion of the show. It goes by so quickly. Um, I know. I don't want to leave you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to have you back very soon. But um, what I would like to know in these last, in about this last minute and a half, what are you doing now? You said you have the nonprofit, um, right. and you said it's launching very soon. You've all, you've already released a second book. What's what else is there for Deborah Rose? Oh man! So what's next is is I'm actually in a co-authoring in another book um, with Sharon and some strong boss up women. That's coming out October 7th. That'll be in L.A. for Get Out of Your Own Way. Um, she, you know, that's Sharon's play that she wrote. But what's next after that is is here right now. I'm doing life coaching programs. If you're interested, please inbox me, call me. How um, can they Deborah do that? Rose is my name. I'm sorry? How can, they, how can they get in touch with you? Is inbox the best way or can they call you or email you? You can email me at Miss Deborah. That's M is in Mary, Z is in uh, zebra deborah at icloud.com um deborah rose on facebook um phenomenal women by nature um dot com will be up it's up and running so you can contact me that way 267-825-4489 is my phone number just call me all you have to do is call me and i'll pick up the phone okay. leave a message well torin wants to know if you ever thought of making your book into a tv series absolutely Absolutely. You I would need love to get in to. touch with Tori. He can help you with that. Absolutely. I want the world to see me. I want the I want to be a motivational speaker across the world with an interpreter. I know I'm going to hit every state in the United States, but I want this thing to go global, Rhonda. I want women to know all over the world that you can step in to be your true yes. authentic self. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you so Absolutely. very much for being on the show tonight. This was phenomenal really enjoyed it. And I believe that somebody who hears your story is going to be blessed because of your story. So, um, I want, I want to thank you once again. I want to, um, just pray God's blessings over you as you continue to bless other people with your books, 
with your future TV series, with your nonprofit. Yeah. Um, and so please much. stay in touch and let us know how we can continue to support you. Great. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, everyone that chimed in. I appreciate everything. God bless you. Blessings to everyone. Thank you. Okay, so we are going to be right back. And when we get back, we are going to meet um, my fellow John F. Kennedy Cougar from here, right here in New Orleans, Mr. Arthur Gilbert, who is a motivational speaker. He's an educator, and he's just doing so many things in the city. He's mentoring. And so we're going to hear a little bit more about him right after this. We're going to take a very short break. And when we get back, we're going to meet Mr. Arthur Gilbert. So stay right there. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. We'll be right back. Here at Jones Insurance, your full service agency, let us take care of all your insurance needs. We provide homeowners insurance, flood, rental, commercial, auto, and life insurance. Don't let the unexpected tragedy destroy your family's future. Here at Jones Insurance, 7603 West Bank Expressway, Monroe, Louisiana, 772. Contact Lois at 504-348. One four nine two. We're back. Talk what you know returns on Wednesday mornings at eight a.m. We got a brand new co-host by the name of Bob B. And hey, that's me. Also, we got some new features. We're going to be giving away have a weekly raffle of prizes. Uh, there are multiple ways for you to win, and there's a bevy of prizes. So we need you to come on back, join us on Wednesday mornings at eight o'clock. For Talk What You Know on the New Orleans Talk Network. Listen up. Your customers, our listeners, could be hearing about your business right now. Yeah, right now. Don't miss out on the opportunity to advertise with NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. Call our business department today at 504-475-4793 to hear about our great rates. NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. We provide the people, you provide the business. Here at Jones Insurance, your full service agency, let us take care of all your insurance needs. We provide homeowners insurance, flood, rental, commercial, auto, and life insurance. Don't let the unexpected tragedy destroy your family's future. Here at Jones Insurance, 7603 West Bank Expressway, Monroe, Louisiana, 772. Contact Lois at 504-348. One four nine two. We're back. Talk what you know returns on Wednesday mornings at eight a.m. We got a brand new co-host by the name of Bob B. And hey, that's me. Also, we got some new features. We're going to be giving away have a weekly raffle of prizes. Uh, there are multiple ways for you to win, and there's a bevy of prizes. So we need you to come on back, join us on Wednesday mornings at eight o'clock. For Talk What You Know on the New Orleans Talk Network. Listen up. Your customers, our listeners, could be hearing about your business right now. Yeah, right now. Don't miss out on the opportunity to advertise with NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. Call our business department today at 504-475-4793 to hear about our great rates. NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. We provide the people, you provide the business. the time flies. What's up y'all? It's your girl Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson and can you believe that it has been one year since Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions hit your airwaves? We have interviewed authors, entrepreneurs, playwrights, musicians, and everyone in between all to bring you the best in literary conversation and we plan to do it again this year but only better. So join us right here in the Literary Lounge each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. See you there. As promised, 
I'm back. And I have my fellow JFK Cougar from right here in New Orleans, Louisiana, in the studio with me, Mr. Arthur Gilbert Jr. What's going on, Rhonda? How you doing? I'm great. How you doing? I'm fine. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks All for right. Having me. So let's just jump right on in there okay. because you've been doing a lot. I met you at the Real Men's Conference exactly. back in June. Right, right. Yeah, and um, you told me that you were a motivational speaker. Right, correct. So what made you decide to get into speaking? My reason for getting into speaking was simply this. Um, I had a voice and I have a passion mm -hmm. for speaking because I believe that communication, verbal communication, is very important. And God gave me the gift to communicate in the best way and um I just wanted to exercise that, and I wanted to reach a lot of people. And that's my reason for really wanting to do that. Okay. And now, um, you were, you kind of started off with speaking with our young men. And um, I talked a lot about that at the beginning of the show. Right, I'm not sure right. if you heard me. Yes, yes. And there is a lot going on in the city with our young men right now. Most definitely, most definitely. Um, one thing that inspired me, um, it was an Ebony magazine. Mm-hmm. It was an issue, and the whole issue, the whole magazine was on black men. And I read it from cover to cover, and as I was reading it, the light was going off, you know. And um, it was very powerful and simple at the same time because it basically said how our young men need love. Yes. You know, you might think of some other very extreme, complex well thought out and what are we going to do with these young men in our city mm -hmm. and in the country furthermore and it says simply they needed love so when i read that article i exercised it every young man i would see mm -hmm. i would smile like i'm doing now i would smile and i would ask them how you doing what's your name man i would i would i would shake their hand and i would just ask them how they doing and I would just talk about pretty much whatever they were talking about. Yes. I wouldn't stoop down to their level, but I would talk to them like there's someone and I would respect them and I would love on them. Mm -hmm. And I would love on them in a way that a, a man should exemplify love to a younger man. You know, with respect and with love and with common decency. And when I did that, their eyes just opened up and if you could have saw the response, it was really no short of miraculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you think that's, um, it may not be the only answer, right? but do you think that's um, a big part of it, um, why we're seeing so many young people? I mean, um, the carjacking I talked about mm -hmm. earlier was committed by a 16 and 17 year old. Right. Um, there was a 15 year old, mm -hmm. I believe yesterday, who was killed in a shootout. Mm -hmm. Why Why does it seem like so many of our young men are getting caught up in this? Is it because of a lack of love, do you think? Absolutely. See, um, my platform with motivational speaking, I speak, God gives me the gift, I speak to the core. I don't speak to everything around the core. Like a flower, the, the inside of the flower is the core. That's where the center is. That's where all of the makeup of that flower produce the petals and the stem and everything else. And I speak to the core of that individual. Now, those young men that are doing all of these things that we are very concerned about, that we need to exercise the solutions for, mm -hmm. they need attention. And basically, they're like the blind leading the blind. Right. They're raising themselves. And they're raising each other, and they're influencing each other without, with, with lack of knowledge on how to come up and how to grow up, mm -hmm. how to present yourself, and how to be a viable part in your community. So what's, what's, what's the answer? I mean, are we looking at more mentoring programs? Are mm -hmm. we looking at more of our positive grown males um, reaching out to the younger males? Yes. Are we looking at more educational programs? Mm -hmm. what, what do you believe is the answer? All of those things you just touched on, they're very viable parts and they're very important. And we, we really need more men such as myself. I know a few men in the, in the city 
that are doing a lot of big things. Mm -hmm. And um, I challenge them as well. And they challenge me too, to come together so that we can literally go into the highways and the byways, go into these neighborhoods, and actually embrace these young men and talk to them and develop relationships. Not just a one-time thing, but a constant thing. Yes. You know, so that's yes. very important. Yeah. And so now you've been able to spread this message through a number of different ways. You've spoken with, you've spoken at the Urban League. Mm -hmm. You've spoken um, at a Delta Sigma Theta event. Right, right. And um, so um, have, are you just able to get yourself in the right place at the right time? How were you able to get into these venues? Well, um, just by me being from here, you know, you know some people that know some people, and you express your, your passion for what you're doing, and they oblige that. God mm -hmm. willing, and you know they oblige that, and I take advantage of those situations, and um, it puts me in positions where the passion that I have is being allowed to move forward and to reach and touch these young men. Okay, yeah. like you know, this is a literary show, so right? um, do you plan on writing a book? Because you sound like you have a lot of good ideas. Of course, I plan on <laughs> writing books. You know, okay, I not plan, a book, books, not, not just one book. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm. I am a published author, and that is one thing. But while we're talking about that, the Embody program with the Delta Sigma Thetas, the young men, throughout the process, it was like a six-week process, mm -hmm. and throughout the process, um, each one of those guys they stood up and, well, I want to be a basketball player, I want to be a chef, right. I want to be a chemist, I want to be an engineer, and I said, hold up, rephrase that. I said, how about you say this? Say that you are. Yes, yes. In the present. You speak the present, and when you speak the present, you draw that energy towards yourself. Come on now. And when you draw that energy towards yourself, the universe responds to that. And when the universe responds to that, it opens the door for whatever you are aspiring to be. And when you're aspiring, you aspire already, so that's who you are. That kind of sounds like ego vision. Yes, it does. <laughs> Yes, so, it does. So, talk uh -huh. to me about Eagle Vision. What is Eagle Vision? Well, Eagle Vision, um, the idea of the eagle came to me mm -hmm. through finding out the characteristics of an eagle. You know, I, I do a lot of self-inventory, self-examining. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what? I know a lot of people. A lot of people know me. But I'm, a, I'm by myself a lot. And a lot of times I need to be because I'm always working on me. I'm always in motion of bettering who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you relate, you know, we as humans, we like to relate ourselves yes. to something powerful, something, you know, assertive, something with a fiery attitude, whatever, whatever floats your boat, you try to look for something to connect yourself to. Mm -hmm. And I love birds. I don't know why. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I just like birds. And I was like, you know what? The eagle he flies high. Yes. He's pretty much by himself. Yes. He's an awesome hunter. Yes. And eagles fly into the storm. Mm. They don't they don't take refuge when they see a storm coming. A lot of birds take refuge if they're flying and they see a storm coming, they fly to the mountain and they sit on the mountain and allow that storm to pass. Come on. Now, now. an eagle he sees the storm and he embraces himself for the storm. And he flies through that storm because at the end of that storm, there's sunshine. And he knows that and he can see. An eagle has 20-20, you know, we have 20-20 at our best, but an eagle has 40-40 or more. So his vision is very powerful. So he can see the storm and he can also see what's beyond the storm. Yes. So he embraces himself and he just strap his wings up and he okay, pushes on it. through it. Yeah, so that's the metaphor or the, the similarity with Eagle Vision and the company that I represent. I'm the CEO of that company and how we as a company, we persevere through anything and we keep on moving because there are lives that need to be touched and moved in and through our movement. All right. Now, I mean, <laughs> you just said like five <clears throat> mouthfuls. <laughs> and yes, I'm, I'm yes. here for it. I'm right, here for right, it. Right, so I'm right. not mad at you. Uh -huh. Now, but um, 
what exactly does Eagle Vision, is it a mentoring program per, per se, or is it a speaker program? It's Basically, what is it? Eagle Vision is me, myself, and the brand, which is me, mm -hmm. and my motivational speaking, okay. which is what I do. And um, also, I don't know if you're about to ask, but I have a nonprofit, which is called the Community um, School Bridge Program Initiative. Yes, um, actually, I do want to talk uh -huh. to you about that because you know um, when I was reading up on you, I did see that. Yeah. So, um, and that's why I said earlier that you're also an educator. You're working mm -hmm. with these schools. Right. So let's talk a little bit about that program. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. The Community School Bridge Program Initiative. Initiative means take action before mm -hmm. others do. So we're initiating an action. Okay. I'm born and raised in New Orleans, and I went to John F. Kennedy and public schools in New Orleans. So coming up, we were in school, and your mama always said, hey, you mess up. I'm coming to the classroom, mm -hmm. and I'm going to put something on you, right? Mm -hmm. And saying all of that to say the presence of our parents and our classmates' parents and the involvement that the community had with the schools mm -hmm. was very viable to us as far as our development. You know, so that's what my 501c3, my um, my program is about, um, bridging the communities and the schools. Yes. And you have different more facets. More parent and teacher of interaction. Of course, yeah. Okay, so we're going to touch a little bit more on that, but we're going to take a quick break. Okay. And so I want you guys to stay there. Hang in with us. We have about 13 minutes left in the show. We're going to learn a little bit more about Mr. Arthur Gilbert and what he has planned. He has some great things coming mm -hmm. up. And so uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about that. But while we're gone, remember to like, comment, and share. Let's make this thing go viral. Thank you so much for sticking in there. Um, this has been a great show. Thank you for all of your um, interaction. But we're about to do this thing. We're gonna ha we have about seven more minutes left in the interview. So stay right there. And continue to like, comment, and share. And subscribe if you're on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, we have yeah. this is on YouTube too now. That's right, that's right. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. All right. Okay, All right. so. What it do, y'all? It's DJ Slick Daddy from the live line. Here to tell you about the hottest bar in the West Bank, After Dark Sports Bar, 419 LaPelco Boulevard in Gretna. Come check us out on Monday for Steak and Oyster Night. Thursday, free seafood night. Friday, three for one happy hour. Saturdays, ladies night, and always open for parties. And then Sunday, Saint Sunday, Oldie but Goodie Sunday. Come find out what it's hidden for at After Dark Sports Bar, 419 LaPelco Boulevard in Gretna. Doors open at 6, 12 p.m. on Sundays. After Dark is a nine smoking ass. Hey yo, what's up? It's your boy DJ Slick Daddy. This is DJ Slick 504. And of course, I'm your girl, Black Coco. Tune into the live line, New Orleans Talk Network, every Tuesday, 7 to 8.30, with all the trending topics. And you can also check out my mix, DJ Slick Mix for 1 and 2. And of course, check out Coco's Sex Tips of the Week. And hashtag TTBS. That's that bullshit. It's the live line, New Orleans Talk Network, Tuesday, 7 to 8.30. We're always live. Let's go! Hmm. Oh, how the time flies. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson. And can you believe that it has been one year since Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions hit your airwaves? We have interviewed authors, entrepreneurs, playwrights, musicians, and everyone in between, all to bring you the best in literary conversation. And we plan to do it again this year, but only better. So join us right here in the Literary Lounge each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. See you there. What it do you Love them to death, yeah. though. But we. Oh. 
Okay, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> So okay. he didn't give you any warning yet. I know, no, I thought I heard a boom. Okay. So I wanted to make sure it wasn't me. Right, right. Yeah. Right. So we were just talking about your nonprofit, um, right. bridging um, the community to the schools, um, exactly. more, um, encouraging more parent and teacher interaction. Mm -hmm. And um, how is that going? Well, it's going good. Um, the first thing I was reaching out to the parents. Mm -hmm. You know, my son, he's at Mildred Osborne Elementary. So I've been connecting with a few parents there and getting their information and letting them know about the concerns that we're having. Mm -hmm. Nothing bad, but we're just about solutions and about making things better. Yes. You know, so that there can be more of a close knit from us as parents and the mm -hmm. school administrators. And yeah. I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, when our parents are involved in what's going on at right. the school, we know a lot faster when mm -hmm. our children aren't doing as well. Exactly. We can actually nip certain things in the bud because mm -hmm. we'll be able to catch them a little earlier. That's right. We know that if our child is actually doing very well, mm -hmm. but the teacher's not giving them the credit that that's due, exactly. we can get that fixed as well. Exactly. So it, I mean, it, there's a lot to it. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a combination. It helps the parents mm -hmm. be more informed, and it also helps take some responsibility off of the teachers as well, because a lot of parents also, you know, they, they treat the school system like, here, yeah, here's yeah. my, yeah, a babysitter. Yeah. So it allows the parents to take more responsibility as far as the mm -hmm. academic side, and also it helps the, the educators, takes a little load off of them, and it, it gives us a better relationship with each other, because in this day and time, you drop and go, yes. or you pull up and pick up. And that's pretty much it. So um, the program that I'm, I'm supporting, that I'm representing, that the movement, we're all about bridging that gap because I'm, I'm old school. Yeah. You know, and I feel like what was was good and what is needs to be tweaked a little bit, so to speak. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Now school just started. The school mm -hmm. year just started. Right. Have you already gone full speed ahead for this year? Well, I've been contacting principals at different schools, the vice principals, and getting um, some relationships going on with them as far as me come and speak over there. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I've been talking to some parents, and we've been forming some relationships because it's all about the relationship first. Yes. So we form the relationships, mm -hmm. and then that builds the rapport, which builds the trust, which opens the door, which allows us to come in and solve things because... I don't ever want them to know, and the parents as well, to know that we're against them and they're against us. It's not about that. It's all about us knowing collectively that we're here for the betterment of the child. Mm -hmm. And like Ms. Deborah Rose was talking about earlier in your program about her situation and just stuff like that, which is very serious, how just say if a parent was very... Um, implement it into schools mm -hmm. whereas they can pick up on stuff because mm -hmm. you never know what the parents went through in their childhood right. they're making sense right. some things in a young lady or a young man that they might be going through and that they can pick up on and they can also be there for that child yeah. So how can, um, there might be somebody out there right now who's mm -hmm. watching this, there might be some men who want to get mm -hmm. involved in right. Eagle Vision, mm -hmm. and um, with the, and it's called the State Bridge? The Community School Bridge yes. Program Initiative, yes. Yeah, so how can they get involved? Well, they go, or can they? Yes, of course. They can, mm -hmm. um, they can go to my Facebook, which is Eagle Vision. Okay. Eagle and Vision, two, two different words. Mm -hmm. um, and they can go to my Instagram, which is Eagle Vision 4170. And they can reach me at 504. 541-1290. That's 504-541-1290. Mm -hmm. And they can email me at authorgilbert97 at gmail.com. That's authorgilbert97 at gmail.com. Okay, we do have a question yes. here. Um, first of all, Keith Hewen, he says that education takes more than just teachers. Right. And you touched on that. Mm -hmm. He wanted to also know if Eagle, Eagle Vision is in Vernon Parish. Vernon Parish. Yeah, is it just in Orleans Parish right now? Um, as of right now, we're 
we're not limiting we're not limiting any any demographic mm -hmm. we we um do um have an interest in our youth period so it has no boundaries so if he wanted to get together and form some type of alliance where we can come together and do some work where he is that won't be a problem at all well, I'll tell you one thing. I know Keith Hewitt, uh -huh. and this is somebody you definitely want to get involved. Most he, definitely. He has, a, he has a real heart for our children. Yes, that'll be that'll be good. Keep, by all means, contact me, man, and um, mm -hmm. we can do some things. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Okay, now you heard that, Keith. I know you heard that. So that means you're going to have to reach out to this man, and he didn't put all his business out. Keith, so reach out to, to me, Keith. Yeah. You have to run the video back so you can get all that um, information again. <laughs> but you can also just go to his um, Facebook page, which is Eagle Vision, mm -hmm. or you can go to the Instagram, which is Eagle Vision four one seven zero. That's correct. That's correct. And then we have the. Um, you can email him at Eagle Vision four one seven zero at gmail dot com. That's it. See, I know these things. Uh, like that's, it, that's it. That's it. I know that's these it. things. Well, I want to thank you. I cannot believe time is just wow. about gone already. Gone already, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I want to thank you so much. Oh, he said, will do. Will oh, do. my goodness. Huh? My daughter just said that this show is absolutely amazing and informative. Wow, okay. I recommend that anyone watch Horizons and read um, her books. Oh. <laughs> Tear jer jerk a yes, moment. <laughs> yes, Thank you. <laughs> She's the best, right? Yes, she is. That's yes, good. she That's is. That's good. But um, no, I do want to thank you for being on the show and for spreading the word about what you're doing. Most We're going definitely. to continue to get you out there, Most definitely. Um, get you into the schools, um, because what you're doing is so valuable. Absolutely. I mean, it's just like he said, education is about more than just teachers. Exactly. Our parents have to be involved. Right. right. So, okay. um, so continue doing what you're doing. Yes, and you know what we need to do, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's being fellow Cougars or not. Okay. All, we, we need, need to get over to um, Lake Area, which is now John F. Kennedy. Ah, most definitely. And let's work with the kids over there. Yeah. 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 They're going to get tired of it. Like, what are these Kennedy people right. leave us alone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they gonna, I think they might be getting tired of it already. But we, we here and we coming and we ain't going nowhere. No, we can't go anywhere. That's we right. still love our kids. That's right. <laughs> Well, uh, we just have a couple minutes left in the show, so I do want to just do a few little announcements. If you are an author and you would like to go to Houston to promote your books, the National Black Book Festival is going to be October 25th through 27th. And uh, look at the people who are going to be in this um Oh, goodness. <laughs> All these people who are going to be in this festival is going to be awesome. This is hosted by um, Cush City. What's wrong? Nothing. Oh, uh, it's hosted by um, Cush <laughs> City Books, which is in Houston, Texas. I had Gwen Richardson on the show actually just a few weeks ago, and we're going to be doing some more work with her. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. And for those of you who came to the New Orleans, the Black History Month New Orleans Literary Weekend back in February, you might have seen the play Cheating in the Next Room, which was the world premiere of Cheating in the Next Room, um, which was based on my very first novel mm. of the same name that came out way back in 2004, 14 years ago. I cannot believe it's <laughs> been that long already. Wow. Really? Yes. Okay. But um, the play is coming back, y'all. The play is coming back. So November 9th through the 11th at the Cutting Edge Theater, we will be showing three encore performances Bigger and better, you know, new music. We actually, we're actually auditioning for a new male lead. So if you are a male actor and you, you want to um, get your chops in some... What you, uh, what you doing? <laughs> I could get a role on that play. Or okay, yeah. okay. Well, yeah. I'm gonna need you to come read. I will. <laughs> <laughs> right, we are doing readings tomorrow at CC's Coffee House on Esplanade Avenue, the gorgeous Esplanade Avenue, um, at five o'clock. So if you come out at five o'clock, you can read for the role. We already have some people who are coming out, but we really want this to be a strong character, a strong actor. Mm -hmm. So. If you got if you got oh, the chops, yeah. come on out. All right. <laughs> so um, that is for Christopher. For those of you who are familiar with the book, that um, that book is my baby. I love cheating in the next room. I actually wrote uh, two two or three other books based on just that one book. Because so many people 
love the story and I want to thank you all for keeping it alive after all these years so the music is starting which means that the um, show is over we gotta go thank you for sharing <laughs> thank you for having me thank you for having me oh thank you for being here yes. we're, we're gonna do some great work together oh, yeah. for those of you who don't know Arthur is a MTW client, so we're going to be doing some great work with him over the next few months. So be on the lookout. And that's all we have for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a special treat for you next week. We have a celebrity guest next week, so y'all going to have to tune in so you can find out who it is. But celebrity guest next week, so stay tuned. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful week. Have a very safe weekend. God bless you, and good night. Bye-bye.